Good morning children. Today we will study more about the Peninsula Plateau. We have studied about the northern modern regions of the Himalayas and the northern plains. Now Peninsula Plateau. Peninsula Plateau we know that plateau regions are in uh, central and south India. Peninsula Plateau that is lying in the south Indian regions, uh, south India. So Peninsula Plateau is uh, also called a table land. Plateaus are also called a table land because on the top of this land is uh, flat. So it is composed of uh, what are the crystalline, igneous and metamorphic rocks. The different types of rocks are found in this region. It was formed due to the breaking and drifting of the Gondwana land and uh, making it a part of the oldest landmass. We have studied earlier classes how the Gondwana land was uh, separated from Angara land and uh, how the supercontinent, single supercontinent was divided into different continents now. So uh, this Gondwana land was uh, also uh, uh, here separated and these uh, plateau regions are formed. So in this plateau has bound with the shallow valleys and rounded hills are there. Many of the smaller hills are found here. Uh, valleys or etc. are found in this region. So plateau consists of two broad divisions. Peninsular plateau is majorly divided into two broad regions. That is one is called the Central Highlands and the Deccan Plateau. So Central Highlands are coming to the northern part of the uh, part of the peninsula plateau and uh, there we can find the Narmada river covering the major area of the Malwa plateau. So Narmada river and Malwa plateau is part of the central highlands that is coming to the north of the peninsula plateau. Here the Vindhyan range is bounded by the Satpura range. Vindhya and Satpura ranges or mountain ranges are also found here and Aravalli mountains can be found in the north western regions. In this peninsula plateau Aravalli mountains are coming to the north western regions. Afterwards from the, towards the western region if you are moving further we can find uh, the sandy and rock deserts of Rajasthan also from Aravalli mountains desert region of Rajasthan can be found there. So the flow of rivers draining this region namely the Chambal, the Sindh, uh, Betwa and the Ken. These are the rivers flowing from south to west to the northeastern. See the it's a, a slope we can indicate in, uh, that is from southwest to the northeastern direction these rivers are flowing. Okay, when you see from the ma uh, map, we will find it uh, upward movement, uh, upwards uh, to the northern regions, uh, northeast regions from southwest. So that the slope also we can understand uh, from uh, southwest to the northeast direction, there is slope. Central highlands are wider comparing the uh, all wider in the western region. When towards the east direction, it becomes a narrower also because valleys are also can be found in the uh, east direction. Eastward extension of this plateau are locally known as the Bundel Khand and Bagdel Khand. East direction, when this plateau is extending towards the east direction, eastern side it is called Bundel Khand and Bagdel Khand. So the Chota Nagpur plateau also is found here in the eastward direction. Um, then uh, drained by the uh, river Damodar also. Damodar river also is flowing through this region. <coughs> then coming to the Deccan plateau, it is a triangular shape of land mass lying to the south of the river Narmada. Below Narmada or the south of the river Narmada, <coughs> we can find the Deccan plateau. It's in a triangular shape also. So the uh, Sarkura range flanks its border, its north, the Sarkura mountain ranges uh, from the Sarkura mountain ranges, it is extended towards the south direction. Then the <coughs> Mahadev, Kaimur hills and the Michael range, these are all forming in the extreme eastern directions. Eastern direction we can find, uh, these are eastern border of uh, uh, this uh, Deccan plateau, we can find these mountains also. Deccan plateau is uh, higher uh, in the west and slopes to gently eastwards. 
on the western direction we can find a deccan plateau is higher there are western ghats mountains also which is also known as sahyadri mountains where it slopes towards the east direction western from the west to east direction the deccan plateau slopes so that almost all the rivers we can find flowing from western ghats to the east direction and draining into the bay of bengal <coughs> here uh, also we can find here the extension of uh, northeast locally known as meghalaya karbi anglong plateau north uh, kachar hills etc these are the all the different uh, mountains uh, smaller hills available in this region it's also separated by a fall from the chota nagpur plateau three prominent hill ranges from the west to the east are gharo hills khasi and jainshia hills these are also important hill ranges found here now coming to the western ghats and the eastern ghats and these both are the eastern mountains so western ghats and eastern ghats are the mountains on the western border of india or the west southwest and east southeast border in the deccan plateau these both are uh, like the mountain borders <coughs> western ghats are parallel to the west coast they are also continuous chain and mountains here on the western border for western coastal area crossed through only passes because it is uh, there are passes in between the mountains also that's why we can cross through the passes only very high mountains very high hills are here you can find uh, thal bor and pal ghats these are important ghats in this uh, western ghats western ghats are higher the are higher than the eastern ghats eastern ghats are slower uh, lower hills average elevation or height of the western ghats is 900 to 1600 meters and in the uh, comparing the average height of eastern ghats is 600 meters only now the eastern ghats stretch from the mahanadi valley in the north mahanadi valley to the nilgiris in the south from mahanadi valley to the nilgiris in the south that is the region where eastern ghats are found eastern ghats are discontinuous sometimes in between there are also <coughs> large valleys are found there or slopes are there irregular and dissected by the rivers draining into the bay of bengal west from the western ghats what are the rivers originating are flowing through the eastern ghats only so that many of the places it is also broken here there it is not a continuous mountain range eastern ghats are uh, broken in between <coughs> there are also we can find the western ghats are known in a different local names western ghats have different local names also the height of the western ghats is progressively increasing from north to south and the height of the western ghats is increasing from north to south south direction we can find large mountains or the large hills here the highest peak include the ani mudi it is 2695 meters and the dodda betta which is 2637 meters also these are in the south india mahendra giri is 1501 meters which is the highest peak in the eastern ghats so in the western ghats we can find the two uh, important or the highest peaks are ani mudi and dodda betta at the same time the highest peak uh, in the eastern ghats is the mahendra giri so shevroy hills and the jawade uh, hills uh, which are also located in the south east of the eastern ghats also these are the mountain peaks in the uh, eastern ghats famous hill stations we can find udaga mandalam or popularly known as ooty udaga mandalam or ooty then kodai canal these are important uh, <coughs> hill stations in south india which are also located in this uh, region one of the distinct features of the peninsula plateau is the black soil area of the deccan trap the regions where black soil is found in the deccan region is called a deccan trap in the deccan peninsula we can find the uh, deccan trap that is a black soil uh, area so this is originated from the volcanic eruption many millions of years ago it was <coughs> there was volcanic eruption in the uh, this peninsular region that's why this black soil is found here 
so <clears throat> this black soil is very good for the cultivation of different varieties of crops also in the arable fields in the north extreme northern part northwestern regions uh, peninsula plateaus uh, is bordered with the arable hills also <clears throat> these are the highly eroded hills we know that uh, uh, it's very uh, ancient period it was formed so that uh, continuously due to the extreme climatic conditions these arable hills were eroded by the uh, <clears throat> due to uh, rainfall or uh, uh, wind etc it becomes uh, smaller and they extend from the gujarat to delhi in the southwest and uh, northeast direction also so that's all for about the peninsula plateau region we have studied about the triangular mass of land exits in the south indian regions uh, bordered with the both arable sea and uh, the bay of bengal that's all for today thank you